Hi, this is Kathy Ann Lewis, and yeah, I'm in a different setting. I'm in the sanctuary. Oh, I love our new sanctuary. I hope that you get to see how it is evolving. I hope you show up sometime to just watch all the things that are shifting and changing. It's really quite fun. But anyway, this is what I want to say today, and I shared it last Friday. And I think it was probably one of the biggest ahas I've had in a long time. Because Jesus said, if you're praying, pray in private, pray in your closet. And I, I always thought that meant don't stand up and, and make a big deal about your prayers. You know, like, look how great I sound when I pray. I, you know, I honestly thought that's what it meant. And I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense. But then I got some new information. And this comes from neuroscience, the science of the brain and how the brain works. And by the way, it was Ernest Holmes who said, eventually the scientists will reach the top of the mountain of understanding and the mystics will have been there. So maybe Jesus and other great mystics, sages, prophets, uh, wise and holy people, perhaps they understood something that we're just now beginning to understand. And so this comes from neuroscience and also from Jesus. Like I said, don't pray in private. What they're finding is that if you make a big deal about a goal, in the mind, the goal is accomplished. Now we think that would be great. Well, well then what happens is it says it's accomplished, so why should I try? It's like we get such an adrenaline rush just from saying that we, are, something's gonna happen for us and sharing our goal. We get such a big rush. And then if we tell it to other people, and they affirm, yeah, that's a really great idea. We get, we get the kind of like, I would call it a sugar high, but it's sort of a confirmation high that we get to live off of and enjoy. And then there's no more juice for going forward. So the neuroscientists say that if you have a big goal, keep it to yourself. Affirm it, see it, but keep it to yourself because by saying it out loud, you release some energy that does, and, and especially if you say it to other people and they confirm it, it's like, it's like the party before the party. You had a pre-party and then you don't want to go to the party. So you've had the experience of, yeah, I'm being supported and being affirmed and then like, well, why would I do it? I know it doesn't make any sense, except it does because I've watched it in myself. I've watched myself saying something and kind of living in it. And then it's like, well, why would I do it now? I mean, I don't consciously think that, but I have watched my energy and my attention and my juice for a particular project be dissipated by talking about it too much. Now, I don't think that that is the same thing as if you tell your prayer partner and you ask them to pray for you and affirm with you. But um, just to announce things, I don't think is the right thing to do. And I will be changing the way that I do a lot of my intentions work, and I will be changing the way I teach some of my classes, and I will be changing the way I do some of my retreats, because I think this is a key to juicing up our desires and having them work for us, because that's what I believe in. I believe that if you ask, you shall receive. But ask God, not your neighbor. Bye for now. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, how we are living, sanctuary for you. sanctuary 
invite you to uh, let this music move you a little bit. You know, one of the things I share is that there are five things that help you have unitive consciousness, that actually support you. I mean, it's not that will create unitive consciousness, but it supports unitive consciousness. Now, what is that? That's the consciousness of knowing that you belong. The consciousness of knowing that there's more going on than what you can see. The ability to connect with something greater than yourself. And science has proven there's five things that open up your right frontal lobe, which is the place that is activated when we have unitive consciousness. So unitive consciousness is actually a biological thing. Because <laughs> a lot of our brain is saying, I'm separate protect myself, who are you, let's check this out. And there's another part of our brain that goes, oh, wow, look at this. Wow. Five things. First, chanting. Some things, that's why there's, there's people that in Hindu and Buddhist traditions that just chant. And pretty soon, they're no longer in their worry, they're no longer in their daily concerns. They're actually able to access something different, chanting. Like, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Or the rosary. Or the Lord's prayer over and over again. And then there's movement. That's why the rabbis rock. They rock. Have you ever seen the rocking? Have you seen some of the monks the Buddhist monks, and they're repeating, and they're chanting, and they're moving, and they're moving. I forgot the third one. Oh, high altitude, but we're not there. Can't do that. Also, accidents. That's why people have near-death experiences, like they and their life passes before their eyes, because all of a sudden, what we call time, the, the ability for the brain to take in information, it creates time. But when, when we have a shock, sometimes that just falls apart. We go, whoa, look at how this is all connected. Oh, my goodness. I was going to say a Diet Coke, but that's not true. <laughs> and uh, drugs especially psilocybin, ayahuasca, things like that. But that's illegal, so we're not talking about it. You didn't hear it from me. I don't do it here in the United States, by the way. So, the thing that we can do is listen to this music and just move. Do you know that Northern Europeans are all in the kind of their head? You know, like, oh, let's talk about God. And yet we admire some of those religions like the Sufis that whirl and twirl until they absolutely are lifted above the mundane. So I'm not asking to whirl and twirl because until you know how, you could fall down. I, I know, I studied it for a while and it's very scary until you get it because you do fall down. So just move. Even if it's just to move your head a little bit even if it's just to move your shoulders. So we're gonna sing this through one more time. And I just encourage you, just move. Tried and true with 
thanksgiving how be a living sanctuary for you Oh.